Hey everybody, welcome to a very special bonus episode of The Sit Down. I'm Mike Racine, with me is Matt Anderson. Hey. Frank couldn't be here today, but we have a, uh, a special guest, my friend uh, Nick Mullen. Hello. And uh, <laughs> we're here to talk about probably the biggest cartel that I know of. And it's full of Jews. <laughs> is it, uh, this is like a mob-themed podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Well, it's all about crime, organized crime. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know. Um, I guess you would say the kid fucking in Hollywood is pretty organized. Yeah. And it's pretty criminal. Well, there's no... I mean, there's no real transparency. So you don't know to what degree it's, like, organized or if it's just, like, something that mm-hmm. everybody does. And it's like, yeah, I guess you just don't talk about it. Right. It no. could just be one guy who's a uh, one no, PA or something. No, it's definitely like half of them. You think? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite a few. Well, if I was you're gonna if you're gonna believe the theories, you might as well just go full tilt and you know mm-hmm. say, yeah, it's all of them. Okay, like like everybody. Well, no, like uh, t- if you have good parents, like mm-hmm. it makes your child like a harder target. So it's like the predator kind of like chooses the. The weaker, you know, like if their parents are getting divorced or... Okay. You've been doing a lot of research on this lately, right? Yeah. Well, like a lot of thing. research, a lot of jumping to conclusions. You right. Know, <laughs> it's not something that it's like, you know, there's no Wikipedia page. It's like the Hollywood pedophile, you know... Right. Uh, network revealed. Um, so, so, where, so let me ask you, where are you finding most of this information? I piece it together from blind items and then accusations on Twitter, but like... Mm-hmm. Half of this stuff was like coming up during Pizzagate and like it was all just sort of dismissed as like part of Pizzagate at large as this like alt right. Okay. You know, like because when the alt right does, uh, you know, they even Pizzagate, like everybody that was involved in Pizzagate or, or these accusations, it's sort of done with like it's half joking, half serious. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of people I feel become alt right because you just sort of go too far with irony. And then it's like, yeah, no, you should call for a Holocaust. Wouldn't it be funny (laughs) if we had another Holocaust? And it's like, yes, it would, but we can't do that. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, where's the line? Those alt right guys, they are, they are pretty funny. Oh yeah. They're they're funny. And that's like, that's my favorite part. I know Trevor Noah, but uh, yeah, that's my favorite part about them is that they took comedy away from liberals, which is like something that liberals have deserved for a long time. Right. Um, But I guess, yeah. So a lot of it came out of is like attached to Pizzagate because all, all, all of it's tied together. If like the idea is that elites are secretly fucking children, like it's going to involve politicians at some point. Okay. I mean, you know, like that flight record with Kevin Spacey and Bill Clinton, you know, on the Lolita Express together is like, mm. I mean, Epstein is a convicted pedophile, you right. know, I mean, there's like, why are they going to that Island? Right. You know, I mean, I think they went to Africa too. And there was one trip to Africa where Clinton, like, made sure he didn't have a security detail with him, which he has to do like paperwork to make sure that doesn't happen. Sure. Um, so the logical, you know, Occam's razor, they were raping children. Right. You know, I <laughs> yeah, mean, that's like the only thing it could be. Yeah. What else are they doing? There's like some African souvenir shop or something that he yeah. really likes or yeah, just embarrassing. Uh, yeah. Well, also on that same trip was Chris Tucker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, his name is in the flight logs and I just read something that was like, Oh no, it's not the Chris Tucker from rush hour, but I wouldn't oh, okay. put it past the alt right guys to protect Chris Tucker. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is the kid fuck Island of Chris Tucker. Yeah. I'm the president. I'm the emperor. I'm the king. Right. <laughs> Do you understand the cum coming out of my dick? <laughs> oh my God. Onto a little boy's forehead. Yeah. He fucked Jackie Chan's entire family. Yeah. You know <laughs> what? Traffic. You know what? Good. Good. I don't like, I don't like Jackie Chan's family. <laughs> I love Jackie Chan. If yeah. he was somehow implicated in all this, I would be so disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of heroes left. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, even if it's not like, you know, child fucking islands or whatever, there's been accusations surrounding like certain people in Hollywood that just mm-hmm. have always been there and they have enough money that they can sue whoever says anything and mm-hmm. it just goes away. And that's the way it's worked, you know, historically mm-hmm. until social media. I mean, the, the, the right. Harvey Weinstein doesn't go down if it weren't for Twitter. Right. Yeah. You know, if, right. if there's if there's not this network of people to get behind to force journalists to, re, you know, report these stories or whatever, or not just be threatened by, it's actually one lawyer in particular that like handles all of this shit. This guy Marty Singer, who uh-huh. is like his job is to cover up dirt that's been done by by celebrities by threatening people with lawsuits. Wow. Um. 
What does he look like? Is he like a Lee Schreiber type, like a Ray Donovan? Uh, no. <laughs> Because I think um, I think he would definitely be pretty... something Schreiber. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say leave Schreiber. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's like kind of like a frogish. He sort of looks like Kissinger. Okay, bit. yeah. Okay. You would be good at that job, Nick, to be like a Hollywood fixer. Yeah, what I? I think so. I don't know. I'm not good at damage control. Yeah. I think and 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 if we've learned anything, like the best way to deal with something is just to ignore it, mm. especially with social media. Right. Any kind of attention you draw to something. Because, like, traditionally, the, the method these people could employ is threaten lawsuits. Right. And you can't threaten to sue, you know, 100,000 people that are all saying the same thing. It's just not going to fucking work. Mm -hmm. And even if you did threaten, like, an individual Twitter user, like, that story would get out and everyone would be tweeting it. Right. Because right. there's no accountability. Yeah. yeah. There, there he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he shows up. I, I, Looks like, like, like Tom I, Arnold a little bit. I imagine he shows up eating fun dip when he threatens you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like something really creepy. Um, yeah, he was yeah. Cosby's lawyer. He's Charlie Sheen's lawyer. He's okay. Brian Singer's lawyer. Okay. Um, yeah, he like defends all these people. And like him and him and Cosby finally had some falling out once it was like a million women accused him. But he was with Cosby for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you shared that Charlie Sheen thing. How did that like go away so quickly? Yeah. Uh, I was talking to, you know, go-to gay Tommy, Tommy O'Malley? No. He does the podcast with Karen. Okay. His theory is that people just don't give a shit about boys being sexually assaulted, mm. which is, like, kind of true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that, like, if it's not, like, I mean, I literally, Sean showed us that screen cap as somebody that was like, uh, yes, men get sexually assaulted, but Me Too is for women, so we right. need to just, like, push this shit aside, and it's like, I don't think, I don't think people have the emotional wherewithal to deal with the fact that, like, young boys are being raped by Hollywood. Right. Because if it is a real thing, I mean, it is, yeah. you know, I mean, it, yeah. it, like, it just is. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, like, to have to deal with that, I mean, there's so much, like, cultural unraveling that has to happen. Like, if you found out that Steven Spielberg was raping children... Mm -hmm. You'd be like, we should probably rewrite the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, there's yeah. like so yeah. much shit you have to go back and Absolutely. like right. take out of what what it means to be an American. If like you know these cultural, you know, icons are just sick to rape, people. right? Or Tom Hanks or somebody, or yeah, just like, oh, yeah. yeah. Tom Hanks is supposed oh, to be one of the good ones, though. It's not Tom Hanks. Yeah, no, no. If you uh, had to put money, who would who would you say? Maybe I'll name a celebrity and you tell me if you think they fucked a boy. No, I this think is a the game we play every show. <laughs> Look, the, I mean, my interest in this like was peaked two weeks ago, and it okay. started with, um, it started with Brian Singer, who I had known about prior to this as being like a pedophile. But even mm -hmm. in my own, like, I was like just sort of complacent towards it. It was like, oh yeah, you know, the usual suspect guy is a pedophile. Yeah, you know, I would just like right. Sort of be like, yeah, I guess, you know, people are weird. Like, I just, dis dis I didn't think about it, really. Yeah. But all of this Weinstein stuff started happening, and somebody else accused Brian Singer, who's been, like, dogged by, you know, accusations throughout his entire career. Mm -hmm. And someone else accused him, and then the guy who accused him of raping him, uh, his, like, Twitter disappeared, and then there was, like, five articles written about the accusations that were, like, scrubbed from the internet, mm -hmm. which is, like, you have to have a lot of power and a lot of money to get those articles pulled, you know? It's not, right. like, just Brian Singer by himself probably doesn't have that amount of power. And then I watched this documentary that I'm sure a lot of people have seen, An Open Secret, and that kind of, like, that was, like, it ties a, a lot of people into this thing, and it's a lot of people that have been accused of molesting people and sexually assaulting them, and they just sort of get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, has Brian Singer worked since this stuff has happened? Or Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah he's, of course. I'm sorry to be ignorant. And, and, it's, and the, the accusations have always been there. I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, the first thing, what I, actually, years ago, the first time I saw App Pupil, mm -hmm. which Brian Singer directed, it just felt like a movie about a man that wants to fuck boys. Right. I mean, it's like the the story is, it's like the Stephen King story about uh, a kid who discovers, Brad Renfro discovers that his neighbor, Ian McKellen, is like an escaped, you know, uh, concentration camp, you know, commandant or whatever. And then so he like blackmails him and he's like, tell me everything about like the Holocaust or whatever, or like, you know, being a Nazi. Right. And then they have this almost bizarre, like pederastic relationship uh -huh. between the two of them. And then there's like, there's this gratuitous like shower scene in the movie that like doesn't, it just felt like a movie 
It's just like it wasn't about or... Nazism. Yeah. It was about like men that fuck boys in this secret world of boy fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I like Googled the movie and of like, uh, of course, uh, Singer was accused of like making a bunch of extras like strip naked for the shower scene. And then they just like squashed it. Mm. So the um, Nazi thing was like tacked on. Uh, no, I mean, that's the story, but like artistically it feels like it is about pederasty. I mean, if like, it seems like him trying to justify this dark thing and the relationship between, Mm -hmm. you know, the two of them. And that was always like sort of creepy to me. Yeah. And then, uh, but no, Brian Singer like did all the X-Men movies, you know, he's a producer on all of them. He still works. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, it's in the, they mention it in the documentary, but the guy who does the commentary on the first X-Men movie with Brian Singer went to jail for molesting a kid, Mm -hmm. you know, and he's also good pals with Dan Schneider Mm -hmm. and he was on all that. Oh, he was? Yeah. Who, who, this guy, Brian Peck. Oh, okay. Is he related to Josh Peck? Um, I don't know. Okay. Cause Josh Peck was on, yeah. Drake and Josh, another Nickelodeon show that. Dan Schneider probably yeah. produced. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Okay. I don't watch Drake and Josh. Oh, I'm not I actually <laughs> a fan of Nickelodeon shows. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm more of I a am. pedophile conspiracy theory. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You well, know. it's good. We get yeah. different experts on different <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm, well, uh, it's just like you start looking at this and like how all these people are like connected professionally and it's just like, this is weird. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a weird to the degree in which like if there is like a organized you know, pedophilia because some of them are just convicted pedophiles. Like they went to fucking yeah. prison for it. Right. And then after that, you know, afterwards they toned down their involvement with each other after, you know, cause the defense is like, Brian hasn't talked to Brian Peck in, in years, you know, he was accused prior to that happening. It's like, yeah, but Brian Singer also has his own accusations that like can't go four years without someone accusing him of molestation or rape. Yeah. You know, um, he was named in a lawsuit by this guy, Michael Egan, mm-hmm. um, in 2014. And uh, the guy that took his case was like a pretty prominent sexual abuse lawyer that handled a, a bunch of cases involving the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't just some like fucking, you know, sleazy lawyer. Yeah. And he believed... This was he, like his thing. It was. Yeah. And the lawsuit named Brian Singer, Gary Goddard, Garth, Garth Anseer, and David Newman. Um, who were all just, I mean, people know who Brian, people don't really know who any of those guys are, but I mean, Garth Anseer was like this big shot in terms of programming. He like programmed almost every network. He started program. He was like the VP of programming when he was like 28 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Newman was at Disney, I think. I mean, they, they're like powerful producers or mm-hmm. whatever. So the lawsuit was like big and, and far reaching for him to go after all these guys. And then they found some inconsistency in Egan's story and, uh, the whole case fell apart. And then those guys sued Egan's attorney and he had to pay like a million dollars. Like they came down hard on the attorney and the whole case fell apart. Right. Oof. But, uh, uh, Goddard, Gary Goddard, who was like named in the lawsuit, who's still good pals with Brian Singer, was just accused by Anthony Edwards, Goose from Top Gun, mm-hmm. said he was molesting me. And then Goddard just sort of said, you know, blanket denial or whatever. This was this week. Mm-hmm. You know, blanket denial. So I, you know, I didn't do that. And then uh, someone else came forward now. So you have like two people accusing Goddard. Using Goddard. But that, they're part of like this whole little crew. Mm-hmm. Of like you know Brian Singer pool party boy fuckers right yeah uh, do you think they realize they like to fuck kids first or they liked movies first um like maybe they all maybe they all met in like a pedophile club and they were like let's yeah. go into the movies yeah. I think there was probably was just the always around. pedophiles in Hollywood I mean it's yeah. like it's hard to talk about why that would exist without immediately getting into like homophobic because people raise their eyebrows when. I've like made this argument, but like, right. I would think that in Hollywood where it embraces all these like, you know, uh, sort of deviants and artists or whatever, but it's also just backed by shit tons of money. So there's like, it, it, it's this yep. weird territory where is it sexual expression and freedom or is it rich people fucking whoever they want? Right. Um, and it, you know, historically when homosexuality was seen as like deviancy or whatever, um, also pederasty and pedophilia would fall under that umbrella. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, uh, the, 
barring like an identity of being like, you know, LGBT as distinct from pedophilia, if like everybody's just being That's like of, a new thing, right? Yeah. Every if everyone's sort of being lumped into this category of amoral, sexual deviant or whatever, it would be easier for people to fuck kids to just sort of exist on the fringe without being extricated from those communities. Mm -hmm. So if there were like pedophiles that were part of this like, you know, just sort of like fucked up subculture in Hollywood or whatever, I can see how it would create this shelter for them. And then they would, you know, the cycle of abuse continues, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the last 40, 50 years. So people like Charlie Sheen, who was probably fucked himself as a kid. Yeah. Right. You know, is right. in you yeah. know, fucking Corey Haim or whatever. Right. Yeah. What was the documentary that you watched? Uh, I watched the open secret last yeah. night to prepare for this. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. And then, like, the more, I mean, again, it is just, like, conspiracy theory, and you have to, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's all just c conjecture, I guess. But uh, yeah. there's, like, so many things that are, like, Martin Sheen, a lot of people accuse Martin Sheen of being, like, a, a pedophile and head of this, like, you know, like, he gave over his boys to whoever or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and that's why Charlie Sheen's so fucked up. Right. But then you look at Martin Sheen's life, and he was, like, heavily involved in the Catholic Church, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, we all know what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, maybe, you know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he learned how to fuck boys in the church. <laughs> right. And then brought that <laughs> over to Hollywood. He's going to take skills to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Train in the church. He was like the LeBron of uh, kid fucking. Right. <laughs> take, my, yeah, take my talents. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you what do you think when you hear people talk about uh, like Woody Allen? Because that Manhattan's a good movie, you know. Yeah. But uh, I guess what am I getting at here? <laughs> you think he did it? Um, I don't know, man. I, I I like I might have to revisit the Woody Allen thing. Yeah. Because I I remember my initial impression of that because didn't it hinge on some kind of like recovered memory thing? I'm um, totally unfamiliar with him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she yeah. didn't remember it happening, but then, and recovered memories are sort of bullshit. Yeah, you know, it's right. like, I, the, the, for the most part, people don't think that that's like a real thing, that mm -hmm. you can like be hypnotized and then suddenly remember being raped as like a, a three or four year old. Mm -hmm. um, he also, I, I heard Mia Farrow didn't really like him. Yeah. She had a problem with him, so. Yeah, her, so her. it's like, is that, you know, a mom telling her kid or whatever? And then I know, like, I think Ronan Farrow has gone back and forth in terms of whether or not he believes it. Yeah. The thing is, is, like, that, like, people that are, it's not, my interest in all of this isn't singular instances of, like, somebody abusing kids. Mm -hmm. It's a network of people and a conspiracy you know, doing it that, that covers you know, for each other. And yeah, yeah. It's mostly, yeah, it's that yeah. it's, that's what I don't like the idea of like some kind of big collusion. I mean, there's always going to be fucking pedophiles and sometimes they're going to be in positions of power. Mm -hmm. What you would want is if there was a pedophile that those communities operate like a normal one would, where it'd be like, yeah, this guy fucks kids. He yeah. should be in jail. Right. You know, and not like a whole crew of people that fuck kids that just continue doing whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's like disturbing about it. The kid fucking crew. Yeah. Well, I uh, I cleaned out Woody Allen's basement when I worked for Got Junk, and uh, <laughs> they weren't. He wasn't there, but Soon Yi was there, and she was very like strange. Like I've never met a person who like behaved that way. She was kind of all over the uh, place. Korean. And, uh, and that's his daughter that? in Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that was the only Korean person I, I met. Uh. Yeah, yeah. They're his, weird uh, people. Wife. <laughs> they sure are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we get to cover everything. <laughs> See, this isn't isn't just uh, an organized crime podcast. We're right. also going to talk about uh, how Koreans yeah. are weird. Well, the Brian Singer shit all goes back to um, David Geffen. Mm -hmm. Like the theory is that they, cause David Geffen has like eight billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also get a lot of information just from this one blind item blog in particular, Crazy Days and Nights. Okay, which had like a bunch of reveals, I guess, while all this Weinstein shit was you know going on that they called all this stuff years ago or whatever mm -hmm. or months ago. Um, but they had, they had a blind item on there, um, about, and this is a, this is a true story. This is real. At least the part where, uh, so Don Henley of the Eagles in 1980, uh, was caught with like two underage girls in his, I mean, like he had to call the paramedics cause this like the, the paramedics show up. There's a 16 year old. She's completely naked. She's overdosing. There's a 15 year old there too. 
And then they found like 22 grams of cocaine and a shit ton of quaaludes or whatever. And Don Henley was able to just be like, those are her drugs. Mm. I don't know how they got here. I didn't know she was 16. I didn't have sex with them. So he got like a contributing delinquency of a minor charge Mm. and paid like a $2,500 fine. Never mind the fact that there is no 16 year old in the world that has 22 grams of cocaine on them. Right. Yeah. No one travels with that amount of cocaine. No. It's just not realistic. It's, yeah. You know? it's and like it sort of lawyer. just went away. They but, found it in his hotel room or they. This is in his house. Oh, wow. So they were in his house on Mulholland Drive and they, they caught him with that. Mm-hmm. Now, according to the blind item, the story is, is that Geffen and uh, uh, the Eagles manager like paid off all these cops and shit mm-hmm. and got the case moved over to this detective um, who in the 1980s was like a, like a sort of like a hot shot in the uh, in the vice unit. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in the 1990s, years like 15 years after this story, he was arrested for going around mugging people and raping them. Mm-hmm. So he was like this crooked cop that was like planting evidence and shit. And that all came out years later. Yeah. But, the, you know, they got the case moved over to this detective and then everything was sort of bumped down and covered up or whatever. But uh, in the blind item, you know, they imply that the 15 year old, not the 16 year old, because the 16 year old wound up dead a year later. But the 15 really? year old. I guess grew up, married some politician, and she has like evidence of this cover up that's gonna like hit the news cycles in early twenty eighteen. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Which would be crazy. I mean, it would implicate all these people, you know. Right. Which is, well, yeah, that's still pedophilia, but it's the mm-hmm. the kind we we embrace, which is rock stars fucking which fourteen is, year old girls. <laughs> right. Yeah. The one right. that the, the kind that everyone's okay with. Right. Yeah, it's kind of weird that like there's so many there's so many. Uh, entertainers and that that is just like part of their identity kind of yeah, yeah like, that's why it's so funny because like charlie rose went down today for like showing his dick to women and it's like you, like if we apply this to literally any musician ever right there would be no music industry tomorrow i know like the amount of people that could be called out like yeah. the only reason what charlie rose did was like unacceptable is because he's fucking charlie rose mm-hmm. you know yeah this like soft spoken, you know, and it's of, not that intimate. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like it's, you wouldn't say that about like Suge Knight or somebody. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, right. You yeah. know, if fucking Ozzy Osbourne was accused of, you know, being naked in front of a woman, people would be like, yeah, that's that sounds like something he would do. <laughs> it is funny to picture Charlie Rose being like, come into my office. He's completely <laughs> naked. Right. I don't know. I guess that that must have worked. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. It's weird to like turn on Charlie Rose because I'm sure that's that worked for somebody at some point and he thought that was okay to do. Yeah. I don't think that was like a thing sp- specific to Charlie Rose. I'm trying to do a podcast with him. <laughs> that's why I'm <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. You look at uh, David Geffen on the computer. Yeah. It's, he looks like Berg, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Him and Berg have the same face. <laughs> You want to fuck me yeah. for a million dollars? Jeez, what do we got here? Two 10-year-olds? <laughs> I bet I could fuck both of them. Look, this one's got a huge Puerto Rican cock. <laughs> it, does David, does David Geff, he preys on uh, men, women? Uh, young boys. Young boys. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he was like implicated in that, in, in the Open Secret documentary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing, too, that's crazy is... Uh, 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 Amy Berg's movie prior to that got an Oscar nomination, and then she like just said, "Okay, well, let's expose pedophilia in Hollywood." And they're like, "Oh, no, no, no nobody wants to see this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get yeah, distribution yeah. for this. So just yeah. yeah, just go ahead, just don't you know what? Don't even make the movie, right? Just go, why don't you just delete it from? So, what can be done about this besides like social media and podcasting? Well, I mean, it sounds like <laughs> well, they, they, which, which, <laughs> how do we beat the streets? And yeah, get, the, get the, the answer is nothing. Yeah. The answer, like if if. That's the scariest part is that if you found out there was this ring of Hollywood pedophiles, people would be mad for two weeks and forget about it. Mm -hmm. Because look at the Weinstein thing. I mean, that's still going on. But Weinstein himself is kind of like fine now. Right. And it's been two weeks. Yeah. The the Manhattan DA's office was planning on indicting him like a week and a half ago and it just didn't happen. It's not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen at all. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it will. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. like... As of right now, they're just not going to do it. For rape. For yeah. not, not for like, you know, for like straight up raping uh, 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 HIV positive la huerta. <laughs> yeah. That's do you what think, like Do you think her. maybe That's that- a fun joke I do about her. <laughs> HIV Paz. Who's that? La, Paz de la Huerta. He raped Paz de la Huerta. Oh, I didn't even- uh. But I call her HIV Paz. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like bug chasing. Yeah. She's HIV positive. 
She's not, but right. You know, her name sounds. It's very funny, and I just <laughs> I didn't make the connection. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Um, so what do you think? I mean, do you think that maybe like white women are too selfish and they lack empathy and they only care about <laughs> their own, their own sure. harassment? Sure. Uh, and yes they don't and care no. about kids? Yeah. You know? Does this come back to white women need to be a... Well, I mean, that is, it is funny. Like the, with like all the identity stuff, it's like for white women and like rich white gay men to not think that they're like next in line once they kill all of us. Right. I mean... Come on. Like, look at Lena Dunham's fucking stupid ass <laughs> this week. You know, like, unfortunately, this is one of the 3% of rape cases that's a lie. She should have called that yeah. woman yeah. a liar, dude. Yeah. And like, that's but insane. this is, that's not, you know what, that's not atypical behavior for Lena Dunham. She's mm -hmm. like done this shit for fucking years sure. and she's just been able to be like, yeah, I'm a feminist. And yeah. people are like, well, I guess. I'm the we, voice you, of my generation. Right. Yeah. She's a woman. So we're going to have to listen to what she says. If she insists, if this rich celebrity woman <laughs> insists that she's a fucking feminist or whatever and she cares about oppression then there's no way she's fucking lying about it and time and time again people learn that it was fucking bullshit yeah so you know if they can bring down lena they can bring down anybody mm -hmm. what do you think of that case though i mean like why would why would she why would her and her showrunner release a joint statement saying that it was um according to again blind items mm -hmm. um uh uh, Marie Miller was his name. Yeah. Uh, I, I would, I, they didn't say what it was, but I'm sure he has been privy to her just straight up saying the N word on numerous occasions. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would, I wouldn't put it past Lena Dunham to be like straight up fucking racist mm. in her, pro to the same way that comics are. Right. The thing about Lena Dunham is that Lena Dunham is just like, if she were a rich white man, she yeah. would be like any one of my friends. Right. You know? Just it's a piece of shit. Just a piece of shit. I mean, she yeah. is just a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just this, like, she kind of has to be two-faced for her career. Right. Behind closed <clears throat> doors, I'm sure she's doing ironic racism all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it was probably, they, you know, they felt, okay, well, we got to protect Murray because, mm -hmm. you know, he she knows. She just has a bag of racist props at her house. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese hats and stuff. And mm -hmm. Blackface. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he would have came out swinging like that, though? He's like, if you don't come out and release a joint statement for me, I'm going to tell everybody about your China hats. And No. No, I think people are like, you know, they, they, they weigh loyalty and... And, uh, and, and preemptively, you know, do things like that just in case, you know, Every, everybody's always now sort of positioning themselves to defend against some kind of upcoming accusation. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, half the people I know that are woke are just doing it because they weren't two years ago. Right. <laughs> Which is like so stupid because the answer is to just have integrity and consistency. Right. And it's right. like. Yeah, I've said plenty of racist and sexist things. You can go find them. I'm not going to try and delete them. And if you confront them with me now, I'll be like, yeah, I still think those things are funny. <laughs> and then that's the end of the argument. You can't right. say anything else to me. Right. I disagree with you in the concept that, you know, you're not supposed to say certain things. Right. Mm -hmm. But for, I don't know, a lot of people I know, a lot of people I'm friends with, mm -hmm. you just watch them say, oh yeah, no, that's, it's, it's fuck. They just pretend like the 2013 didn't exist. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, why would you ever f say I was a different like person and I've grown a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're the same person. I, you're right. a, a, a coward. Right. You're <laughs> still the same coward that you were back then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's got dirt. Um, what do you think of why does why does Corey Feldman need ten million dollars for this movie that he's making? Is that uh, is that for protection? Because or? I, I would assume that Corey Feldman probably also molested kids. Really, I think yeah, I think it's a cyclical it's a, yeah. uh, abuse pattern to the same extent that like the guy that accused Charlie Sheen of raping Corey Haim was the one that people for years they theorized he was the one that did it. Mm -hmm. And the the descriptions of the, the Charlie Sheen, Corey Haim thing on the set of Lucas sound like they had a consensual relationship. Sheen and Haim? Sheen and Haim. Yeah. But that Sheen was just sort of like, you know, an asshole, you know, and was like, yo, I don't fuck. Like, they, Haim was like in love with Charlie Sheen. Uh, really? But I don't think it was Haim, like Charlie Sheen that turned Haim out. I also think that Charlie Sheen was probably like 13 and someone was like, this is just what guys do. Yeah. Mm. Which that is what he said to Haim. Yeah. And it's just this, you know, cycle that, that continues. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, that's the way the samurai used to work. Yeah. The samurai would just all fuck boys, and then the boys would grow up and be samurai, and then they would fuck their own boys. Right. Yeah. And then how is the cycle broken? Just from, like, shit porn or something? When they yeah. start shitting no, on each other? No, you gotta fucking drop a, an atomic bomb on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I tell you how it stops. Internment camps. <laughs> Jesus. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love podcasting. <laughs> it's the greatest thing to do in your life. <laughs> Yeah, well, so it's like, yeah, because my grandparents are always like, uh, don't let anyone tell you we shouldn't nuke Japan. I didn't know it was because of that. <laughs> yeah. It was to stop the boy fucking. Yeah. Samurai boy fucking. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, so so you think Corey I think Yeah, I think, Feldman, Feldman, I think Feldman probably, because the way, like, Feldman defended Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of a thing, like, uh, you know, like guys who get like turned out in prison, mm -hmm. they'll ha they'll start having their own like relationships with other prison punks, and then eventually there'll be like people lower on the tier than them, mm -hmm. and they're sort of like the head bitch of the prison punk population or whatever. I think that there exists people locked into that cycle of abuse where they might be horrifically abused as a kid, and then they get older. And then they see themselves, well, kind of like Michael Jackson did, as this like Peter Pan style protector of children. Okay, who just sucks her dick a little bit, right? You know, like it's right. not. He's like he's like I he I love the children. I want to protect them from the horrors that I experienced. And yeah, because Feldman was pretty vehement about saying that Michael Jackson's not a pedophile. Yeah, yeah, and it's like hmm. Paul Mooney would say that too on stage. He go, he's X Files, but he's not a pedophile. And then Elizabeth what the Taylor. Fuck does that mean? Michael Jackson. He, he was oh. saying like he's weird, but he's not a pedophile. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, did Paul Mooney die last year? I don't think so. Oh. Let me check. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any experiences with him? Or? No. <laughs> he was. I was a doorman at Caroline's. He was pretty. He was a nice guy. No, I don't have any. He would do a lot of time though. No, he's seventy six. Hmm. So he's coming up on it. It's so funny because when I worked there, he would like, like white people would walk out and they'd be like, he's just playing the race card up there. And Paul liked when I told them about what they would say. <laughs> He'd be like, you know. Bring me the comment cards, the white comment cards. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I wouldn't be surprised if Feldman has that shit. I also mm -hmm. think he's probably is legitimately worried about, you know, his well-being. Yeah, because if you do name people, you do open yourself up to lawsuits or whatever. Right? Yeah, it's also like who the fuck doesn't want ten million dollars? <laughs> yeah, you know, if I got fucking raped and I was like, my options are do this story for free or get ten million dollars. You bet your ass, I'm going to try yeah. and get ten million dollars. And they're right? going to try to Here's kill a question, you too. Why do I need twenty three thousand dollars a month for a podcast? <laughs> I absolutely don't. But if I'm going to make rape jokes, <laughs> I need that money. Yeah, but yeah. you're not begging for it. That's what the people, that's what the fans are giving you. Sure, yes. Yeah, it's right. free market capitalism. That's how much you're, you're loved by, uh, <laughs> right. by the cum boys and girls. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised if Corey was, because there's weird stories with him and Haim where like, uh, you know, he's always talking about like, he was my best friend or whatever, but people that were close to Haim said that Feldman was not. Haim's best friend. Okay. That they weren't like hanging out regularly until that series happened. Mm -hmm. And Feldman like kind of has almost like a jealousy and spite, you know, directed at Haim in a lot of, even when he was saying like, you know, like the way he said, you know, uh, the, the, like an older actor took my friend Corey in between two trailers and Corey allowed himself to be sodomized. It's mm -hmm. almost like he's enjoying, you know, saying that Haim got raped or whatever. Yeah. Um, and he also says on the set of Lucas, a film I wanted for myself, you know, like he just openly right. admits his jealousy about, you know, Haim's career or whatever. Right. That's the thing too, is you need to keep in mind that like abused or not, he's still a, one, a person from Hollywood, from that fucked up world. Right. So whatever that yeah. creates, he's a part of that fucking monster. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, one of the guy, one of the guys in uh, the end of that uh, open secret, right? He's like a initial v investor of uh, Bitcoin. One of the oh alleged. Brock Pierce, right? Yeah, yeah. Brock Pierce was like threatening people on Twitter last week. He was offering like a, a, a ten Bitcoin bounty to anyone who could dox somebody accusing him of being a pet a pedophile. Which the ten Bitcoin bounty is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. which Holy is like fuck. That's like 
serious. I mean, he has that money too. Yeah. Right. So like, if that's not a huge red flag to people, he could kill people with yeah. that money. Yeah. It's like untraceable money. Yeah. And it's like, you think about like all, all the people that murder each other in, in regular life over the dumbest bullshit. Why wouldn't rich people be murdering each other? Why mm -hmm. don't we hear about it all the fucking time? Mm -hmm. Why is it that like, you know, heart attack gun, <laughs> heart, a heart yeah, attack right. gun that's one of them but then even stuff like i was looking at like sonny bono again the other day and it's like yeah he's an experienced skier dies on an intermediate course and then there's all this coverage about how he was a prescription drug addict after he died even though there was no prescription drugs found in his system in the autopsy hmm. so it's like just like and his head was like bashed in you uh, know yeah like but like yeah it just doesn't it yeah. uh, I mean, not to say that he was murdered, but I mean, like... Right. He just hit the same tree, like, four or five times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Or, uh... Or there was a publicist, this woman, Ronnie Chasen, that was, like, murdered in 2010, and it was, like... The the initial story was... I mean, she was in her car. She was driving her car, and they're like, yeah, it looks like it was a botched robbery. But it's like, she was driving, and she got shot. You can't just shoot some, yeah. like, I'm going to try and rob this moving vehicle. Yeah. Nobody does that. Yeah. And then the guy, the only suspect they had, apparently was going around bragging to people that he got $10,000 to murder her. <laughs> and then as soon as the police department, like, questioned him, he, like, shot himself immediately. So it's like, this really? doesn't, oh yeah. My God. yeah. They went up to him, they're like, can we ask you about this? And he shot himself in the head. Uh, who, was he, geez, <laughs> who was he bragging to? His neighbors and she was just some bum ex convict that got paid to bump her off. Mm -hmm. And there's not really been much of a thorough investigation into who paid him off or why. Mm -hmm. And they said he was lying. You know, oh you know, yeah, that didn't really happen. Yeah, you know. Why do you think she was killed? I don't know. I mean, who fucking knows? Yeah. But like, right. that's clearly a case of somebody who was assassin. It was like yeah. somebody was paid to kill Good that money. woman. Mm -hmm. And then you know, the Beverly Hills Police Department is just like, well, you know, whatever. We get to. Yeah. 10 Bitcoin to dox somebody. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jesus Christ. And then, but Brock Pierce, again, is like, he was a child actor. Right. And like the vibe you get and it, uh, like from watching that, that show is that Brock was probably fucked as a kid, you know, and then got into his teens and they're like, now it's your turn to fuck boys. Yeah. And then he started to, cause they have like documented email, you know, chains in between him and Mark Collins rector. Yeah. You know, it'll send you for a real fucking loop. Read Brock's uh, deposition from when he came back from to Florida after they were all arrested in Spain. Yeah. And it's nuts. I guess like Mark Collins rector was convinced that David Geffen was going to have him killed. Jeez. And so they hired this like guy that was like an ex Marine who like specialized in kidnapping people to like protect them or whatever. It's insane. The whole story is fucking insane. Yeah. I'll follow wow. up. On that. Yeah. That's great. Crazy. Um, so let's talk about, yeah. Let's talk about the king of Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan do you, Schneider. Do you think this let's, guy makes Let's his... talk about the guy who brought me hours of joy as a child. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't grow up with cable, so I have no... Oh, loyal... you didn't? No, I don't have any okay. loyalty to any of these people. I never okay. watched Nickelodeon. Okay. If if I somehow I found I out that the heads of UPN had <laughs> right. been doing this... You know? Star Trek? Yeah, if I found out that... that, that uh, the but even Lorenzo then, it wouldn't... Lamas, you know, <laughs> right? And fucking, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be someone that you were connected to. I think Dan Schneider just made some cameos in like the uh, like a Good Burger sketch. Yeah. So you yeah. haven't seen all that, or Keenan and Kel, or I mean, I've seen an episode or two here or there, you know, at friends' house. But no, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I didn't. Those weren't shows I watched growing up. I mostly just watched The Simpsons. Okay. And then, yeah, I, actually, yes, mostly just UPN. Prior to that, Paramount Television. Yeah. Yeah. What were your shows on? What were your UPN shows? Um, I get. I mean, just sort of. They had kind of shitty programming. Their big thing was Voyager. Yeah, yeah. that was their 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 main show. Sentinel was pretty big. Seven Days was a pretty big show mm. for them. Um, and then they had some weirder programming at the end of the night. I mean, we've we've gone all, into all of this on on our show, but okay. Uh, uh, they had SmackDown for a while. That was big for UPN. Yeah, and uh, Shasta McNasty, which is. One of the funniest. It was a star vehicle for uh, Jake Busey. Okay. And <laughs> it's Jake Busey and a couple other uh, guys are in a rap rock group and they live in a, like a cool apartment in Venice. Uh -huh. And the, f the first episode opens and they're all like gathered around the TV and they have a camera set up that looks into the apartment of the woman across the street. <laughs> 
So they're illegally videotaping this woman <laughs> undressing, and they're like, "It's like move out of the way, dude! I can't see you!" <laughs> oh my they're, god, they're committing a sex crime, and, right? And fucking, right. they're all like, you know. And then they find out that the woman's husband is cheating on her, so they go to like warn her by planting a bra in her apartment mm-hmm. instead of just like telling, telling her, her yeah. like we can't tell her that we've been videotaping her, <laughs> you know, apartment. So th- I guess right. at that point they have empathy for her or whatever. Right. So they have to go like plant a bra and then there's like a long scene where they go into the apartment and the woman's parrot, uh, bites one of them in the dick. <laughs> And then he like has to run around the apartment like oh, <laughs> and it's like, like on it, and yeah, it's with like, a yeah. parrot attached to his dick. <laughs> it's funny hearing about it. It's an a story and B story. That's the thing, <laughs> and I think back to like all the bad entertainment, and it's like the stuff that I come up with as like a joke, and it's like were they were all those writers just doing the same thing I do now? Where it's like, yeah, of course, it's the stupidest fucking shit in the world. I just, right, right. I just want the seven thousand dollars a week. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's <laughs> entertaining. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we got to make points, you know? Yeah, I guess. I hate that, dude. I hate having to make points. Yeah. I just want to say dumb shit. Yeah. Frazier was a pervert with his telescope. That's yeah. like the was same it? type of concept, you know? Yeah. They had that all the time. Because Noah Garden Schwartz was saying that, like, we're kind of in, like, the steroids of baseball era of entertainment where it's, like, everybody did it, so you have to put an asterisk, you know, in terms of, like, harassment. <laughs> oh. So you have to put an asterisk sure. next to their name, and now we just have to move on. But I wonder if anything else is going to come out, you know, 30 years from now that's going to implicate guys from our generation. I can't wait. All the famous podcasters. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean. Do you worry about that stuff? I mean, is there anything like from your past where you're like, I hope. (laughs) No, I I try to not change regardless of like what the consequences may be, because it's like it feels dishonest to me. Yeah, I don't I don't buy the argument that jokes that I've made to private audiences somehow hurt marginalized people. Right. If like you're offended by something, I've always there's always an option to not listen to me. Right. The majority of people that get mad at me now like if you're sitting around searching through old tweets of mine to find something that hurts your feeling, yeah. like that's your fault. Right. That's mm-hmm. not on me. I'm not going to apologize for it. I don't like, I'm just not on board with that. Right. So no, I try not to worry. Mm-hmm. Are there times when I've like crossed the line with like racist humor or like sexist stuff where I'm like, do I really know what I'm joking about? Of course I've done it. Mm-hmm. And on, on a personal level to people I'm friends with, I'll apologize. Yeah. But it's like, I, I, my motivations are like just to be funny. I'm not trying to be some fucking like moral role model. I'm not telling yeah. you to live your life the way I do. Right. Or that you should even, you know, fucking try to push boundaries or envelopes or whatever. Yeah. Why that's is just, everybody? That's just my like inclinations. That's mm-hmm. just what I want to fucking do. And like, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't feel bad about the things that I've done. So I'm not going to apologize for anything. <laughs> Good. I think that's. I think that's a good way to live your life. <laughs> it's yeah, because it really doesn't fucking matter. I mean, that's yeah, no. that's the other thing, too, that, that what you can kind of learn from Charlie Sheen is, like, Charlie Sheen is probably one of the most evil people in the world. Mm. I mean, not only did he fuck that boy, but if you read stuff from his, like, the, Denise Richards deposition and his, in his divorce, like, she caught him jacking off to child porn numerous times. And right. she would, wow. Like, she was, like, crying, begging him to stop, and he would just go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Which is like the funniest response to getting caught doing the most shameful thing you could possibly do. <laughs> right. Is oh get the God. fuck out of my room. I'm busy. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's like Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Just like totally yeah, stoic. Shut the, the fuck up. <laughs> just turning the volume on the child porn up yeah. to drown out her complaints. <laughs> and it's like, all right, Charlie, do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> If you're not going to apologize for it, we've tried. You yeah. know, there's nothing really more you can say. Yeah. Let the man live his life. Right. Jesus. Because um, I, I have friends in this business and they seem like they just live their lives afraid that stuff's going to get taken away from them. And it just seems like a terrible way to uh, exist. Yeah, you really can't. Yeah. I mean, you just, you can't. I mean, sure, things could be taken away from you, but, you know, fuck it. I yeah. Mean, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, you could always go drive a truck or something. Yeah, and there's yeah, right. like ways to make money. Well, that's why you know, I mean, like all of the bloggers that call for people to get fired, that that's like the ultimate punishment for them because their job is fucking meaningless and they don't have any transferable skills. Right. What are they going to do? Become a mechanic? Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so Dan Schneider, yeah, um, this yeah. guy made 
a bunch of shows that Nick didn't get to watch. Were you a Nickelodeon guy? No, I mean, Who cares, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm a little old for that. He made all that. He made the Amanda show. He made iCarly. 31. That's not old for what do you, no that's not old for that at all for nickelodeon for, yeah you would have to be in your like early 50s <laughs> <laughs> well i mean like uh all these shows we're talking about are from like mid 90s so i would have been like 11 12 yeah I that's guess, a child I, <laughs> I guess that's okay that's that's younger than the boy charlie yeah. sheen rake <laughs> uh, yeah, uh well i was 11 and 12 i was already having sex with other guys <laughs> i was having consensual sex with adult men so i was yeah. kind of a past all that Nickelodeon shit. Yeah. So Schneider, he's got a foot fetish. He's had a, a history of sexual misconduct with young girls. Here's a statement that Robert Downey Jr. Uh, released about him. Was it actually online. Robert Downey Jr. or him? It was him. It's him. Yeah. They, well, I don't know if that's Robert, They don't know if that's Robert Downey Jr. Oh, they don't? No, they don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. In fact, it wouldn't make sense that it was Robert Downey Jr. doing that. Why not? Um, I, don't, I, I just don't understand why Robert Downey Jr. would be participating in like blind item blogs on a reddit yeah. okay so you think this person him is just some random i think it's probably person. someone that works in the entertainment industry but I, I don't think it's a celebrity okay Ooh, yeah wielding the the name well here's what they said he's a monster the worst pre predator alive <laughs> and if you wonder why nobody will confront or charge him he's in charge of multiple hit shows for nick which rakes in oceans of money Tens of millions of dollars multiplied by many years and many shows, not to mention his, his merchandising royalties. So Viacom Nick warned him to cool it, then pay for his damn lawyers. What about the parents? No tweener parent who shoved their kid into the limelight from birth is going to cross him either and risk career suicide and loss of revenue. No matter how bad it fucks up the kids, especially if there's multiple kid actors in the family. And the kid agents are complicit too. Just ask the Spears family. A lot of settlements get paid out of Viacom's accounts. This is kind of the sad thing because these kids end up making so much money and then the parents are invested in their careers and the parents buy houses and cars and there's they can't they can't break the yeah. like their kid is like a revenue stream for them. Yeah. So even like your own father, you know, right. not going to protect you. Selling you out. Didn't didn't Corey Feldman's dad sue him for like 40 grand or something like the remaining 40 grand that he had in his bank account? I think what happened was he went to a lawyer and he was like, what were my earnings and what do I have left? And they were like, you earned a million dollars. You have 40 grand left. And I think Feldman's dad tried to take that from him. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, most of these kids that get exploited come from like poor families. You're a fucked up, you know, living situation at home. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so the story of the Heather O'Rourke, the little girl from like Poltergeist, it's like Steven Spielberg discovered her in a restaurant with her mom. He like went up and he was like, you know, I'm going to give your kid a job. Yeah. Imagine for a second that's not a movie producer. Yeah. That that's just a grown man that goes up and says, in I like want to spend field. time yeah. with your beautiful child. Yeah. Because what the fuck? Right. What, what, what is it in that? There's no way you can discern acting ability from just looking at a fucking kid in a restaurant. There's nothing other than just the physical elements of that child that says, I want to offer to buy your child, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like people just accept like, wow, what a dream maker. Yeah, right, I never you know? thought of it like that. That's amazing. Yeah, he was because just looking at a kid <laughs> from across a restaurant. No normal fucking person ever has that impulse. Yeah. Right. Even if you work in like, you know, something where you would have to cast, like I would never think, you know, Someone I'm going to just approach this person and ask them questions about their fucking child. Do you think mm -hmm. it's illegal now, too? Like uh, present day laws? I bet. Hold on. It was illegal to fuck kids then. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was never legal. <laughs> Is it illegal? Now? Yeah. I meant like, uh, you know, uh, approaching they a child. They didn't make a law until after the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and that, that little girl, by the way, is uh, dead. She, the, she is. Yeah, she died when she was 13 from misdiagnosed. They said she had Crohn's, but she had like some kind of infection in her ass. Oh, and the story Jesus is that she Christ. Was, yeah, raped, yeah. To, raped to death, essentially. On the set of Jeopardy. What? what? Yeah, <laughs> at Hollywood Center Studios. Now Sunset Las Palmas Studios. I used to work there. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Heather O'Rourke? That's <laughs> not on the tour? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I would go around a lot, and I would tell people that, and be the like, oh, cool. Yeah, what are you working on? <laughs> the real tour. Yeah. You're working on uh, James Corden's rap battle show? <laughs> hey, you know that little girl from Poltergeist? <laughs> she was raped to she death. She had here. raped to death on stage six. <laughs> oh, boy. Me? 
No, I don't work here. <laughs> no, I had a badge from a job a couple of years ago. <laughs> Come hang out. I'm, 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 I'm in the audience for the next Ad Midnight taping. <laughs> I, just walk around, I just walk around telling people about I just, a little girl from Poltergeist. I love, I love exposing pedophilia and I love puns. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite thing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if everyone who worked at Ad Midnight was a pedophile. You know, I would Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, From Chris hard, Hardwick, Hardwick on down. The entire writing staff. <laughs> <laughs> they're, oh. like, they're like, we just want to get more women writers, POC writers, pedophiles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, p- trans. Yeah. Oh, well, who who were the so, uh, Dan Schneider's alleged victims? Real fast. His alleged victims were because right, 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 right. um, they're big names. Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Allegedly, he molested. That's that people think that's why she kind of like. Yeah, Amanda Bynes and Jamie Lynn Spears are the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jamie Lynn Spears, they never. I mean, this is kind of like common knowledge, but they never named the father of her baby, and they think it's Dan Schneider. And actually, I have a picture of her baby. It's got a (laughs) giant head and a pedophile haircut. (laughs) No. It's just there. She, it's like she's like so young Kurt, and pretty. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt a couple years ago said Lindy West looked like Dan, uh, Dan Schneider, <laughs> and it was like one of the funny because he, he he didn't say Dan Schneider. You know, he's like he has a funny way of saying everything, but he was like uh, he's like a certain blogger that looks like Dennis Blunden from ahead of the class. <laughs> <laughs> and they do look the same. They do yeah. have a very similar look. I want to find pictures of her baby because maybe... Uh, do you think you could just go get a paternity test on your own? That's illegal, right? Yeah, you'd have to get his DNA. Hmm. So, well, here's what we'll do. We'll, <laughs> we'll dress, we'll yeah, dress yeah, Adam up like a little girl. Right. Do saliva tests on kids' feet. And then <laughs> yeah. You, you pull his fucking... Yeah, that's the other thing. The guy's got a major uh, foot fetish, and you watch like his Nickelodeon shows, and there's just uh, oh, well, he straight up solicits feed pictures on Twitter. Yeah, on his Twitter, he's like, guys, send me pictures of your feet. Yeah, it's like, why? Yeah, if if people are accusing you of that, you have to at least be aware of it. Right, right, and then you're gonna fucking go and do something. Yeah, he does pool parties and stuff too. You were saying. Yeah, he has like pool parties at his house. Like no parents allowed pool parties. <laughs> That's, seems like the pedophiles go to. Yeah. Pool party. Yeah, they love pool parties. It just yeah. gets it all done. Mm. Oh boy. Well, stay away from pools, kids. So she's mad. Stay away from but Hollywood. They've Let's never see said this baby. Yeah, that's her. I guess she looks like Schneider a little bit. Uh, no, nah, she looks Hispanic. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. Schneider sounds Hispanic. give Schneider the clear here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's some that's some Latino yeah, yeah. kid. It's the sit down. That's that's a, the classic. Uh, I'm no to father of... Puerto Rican situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was a pedo. Sorry. All right. Well, uh, case closed. Uh, All right, Schneider, you're off the hook for that uh, one. But uh, you still raped Amanda Bynes, and uh, and then r- somebody told me he fucked the iCarly girl. Uh, Jeanette McCurdy is one of the alleged victims, right? You you pulled up her vine. Well, so there was a there's been multiple comment threads about Schneider on Reddit, and one commenter alleged having her f- when she was working as an extra, she had her feet tickled by him for a hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. So. The Have you guy. seen that Mind Hunter, that new Mind Hunter show? Yeah, yeah. You know the the principal. He's like super into tickling children. It feels so. Similar. I haven't gotten to that part. Well, sorry. Oh boy, it it doesn't ruin anything. It's just... I like that show because it's very stupid and it doesn't try to be smarter than it is. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's Fincher. Yeah. It's really... well, Fincher only directed the first one, I think. Oh, the pilot. Yeah, I see. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it's I... well shot. Yeah. I don't know. I was on a bit of a Fincher kick recently. I rewatched Panic Room. Yeah, and I forgot how good it was. Then I watched Seven it's with Jodie Foster, Jodie Foster, and Dwight Yoakam. Okay, nice. I just watched the game. It's oh yeah, one. yeah. The game sucks. It's so fun though. No, it's a really bad movie. Oh, <laughs> Michael Douglas. Yeah, Michael yeah. Douglas. Yeah. Anyway. Michael Douglas probably also a uh, pedophile. <laughs> I I got pussy cancer <laughs> from a little girl. My doctor said it was actually from uh, eating a child's ass. <laughs> I remember. When I, <laughs> um, yeah, but apparently, so Jeanette McCurdy was on iCarly, and then she got a spinoff called. Uh, what More like Bad Jeanette McCurdy. 
Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Why don't you bring that vaginette in? It's like a child's vagina. Oh, Dan. Dan. She's got a vaginette. The 1984 Chevrolet vaginette. Three doors, 110 horsepower. So she was on iCarly and she was given a spin off show called Sam and Cat. And they it's alleged that she got a lot of Schneider's. Um, Yo. With the Ariana Grande, right? The D I C Q, baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so she apparently she posted a vine. Uh-huh. She was like in a bathtub covered in bruises, and then she deleted it. But then she uh, she posted this shortly after this vine. Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my vine. Do you like my vine? Vine, vine, vine. Look what you've done to me. Yeah, she's like the Joker. It's mm-hmm. weird, right? I mean, that so, could just be some weird joke in between right. them, you know. Because at the same time, this guy, like, he's fucking him, right? But mm. he's, I'm sure he's not mean, you know? <laughs> he's just a kid at heart. Uh, he that's, never grew that's up. That's how a lot of these fucking... Because, you know, like, there is a guy who listens to our show who's defending our show against some dumb bitch that was losing her fucking mind about, you know, me and how I'm, like, you know, I say things or whatever. Sure. And this, this is the only trans person that listens to our show was, like, defending us against this woman. And they're going back and forth. And then someone who used to live with the trans woman is like, oh, by the way, uh, she got arrested for downloading child porn in our apartment, you know, numerous times. And the trans person who's defending us was like, yes, that happened, but things have changed. So they're just like a pedophile. And they hit me up all the time still. And it's like, I was friendly with them. So like, I can't be like, you know, don't, you know, fuck off or whatever. I do have empathy for their situation. I mean, it's. I, but the, the way they justified it was like, you know, it's really, it's more about like, you know, be like a youth, you know, being like young or whatever. And it's like, that's, they all say that. I mean, it's like, they don't, that that's like what causes them to offend is that they don't see it as harmful behavior. Yeah. These aren't like people, this, this isn't the Clintons, you know, stabbing a baby to death and fucking all the holes. <laughs> right. You're standing. You know, it's not, it's not a satanic ritual being right. carried out by right. the Podesta brothers. Right. It's like more of a thing where they, you know, yeah, they see themselves as like, I'm just like a big kid. And you know, it's like, Oh, I'm having my, my yeah. first kiss with a girl. It's like, you're 47 years old. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like a 12 year old. Right. Mm-hmm. The Jack movie with uh, Robin Williams. Yeah. It's like that kind of shit. You ever like, let's all compare dicks, boys. You know, <laughs> it's like that. Um, so, I mean, and that's what like tricks the kids into like just staying silent about the b- abuse forever. Cause like they're conflicted and they don't understand. Yeah. And- so you think these kids have maybe like a like an emotional? Yeah, I mean that's why victims blame themselves. It's because it's like they see themselves as like willing participants, you yeah. know. But it's like you're not really. You can't really consent. It's gonna fuck you up later in life. It's not like at the time, you know. That's why the, most of these people get away with it is because like the the real trauma that happens with child sex abuse isn't when you're a kid. It's when you're 23 years old and you're like, you know. Huh, I wonder why I'm a fucking heroin addict, you know? Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, right, because I was, like, raped repeatedly as a child, and I don't know how to talk about yeah. it, and I have all these questions about my own sexuality, and I kind of let it happen. And, By a know. trusted authority figure. Right, yeah. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. th- like that's that's what makes it, it's like, because you destroy yeah. someone's life, you know, for, the, like, the entirety of their life, you know? Their entire adulthood is fucked now because of some, like, horny fucking pervert. Yeah, right. Here's another Jeanette McCurdy vine. <laughs> Working on a sitcom. Bruce. 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 Maybe it's just because I'm anemic. Yeah. So I guess that was the other. It's an interesting way of processing it. So there's conspiracies around those vines? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she said, hey, Dan Schneider in the other one. He but sounds anyway, like a real kinda... piece of shit, though. No, he's just a big kid. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Yeah. Just wants to hang out. Well, yeah, I mean, if you consider, I mean, look at him. He's like a fat nerd, probably yeah. never fucked as a kid. Mm-hmm. And like now his thing is like, I'm going to fuck all the girls that wouldn't yeah. fuck me when I was, you know, 15. And he's going to make them say what he wants in these shows. Yeah. And sell it to their parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a coworker of mine who like told me about Dan Schneider. And he's like, yeah, ever since I found out, I was like, no, you're not going to watch her- this. What a horrific looking man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's married, though. To what, a blueberry? Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's a rumor that he uh, got Amanda Bynes pregnant and paid for an abortion. 
Yeah. What about um, Ariana? Yeah. What? Ariana what? Ariana she- Grande too, right? It was like the four. Jeanette McCurdy, Ar- Ariana Grande, um, Jamie Lynn Spears, and Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real shame. And there's... and and. Nick, I want to say thank you for coming on and telling us there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there really fucking yeah. isn't, dude. Yeah. I, like, I don't... I was going to say we just hit time, too. You know, I, like, you know, look at the Catholic Church shit. Some people got moved around and then they, they forgot about it. I mean, ultimately, like, because separate from all of that, like the pedophile stuff, is like we are kind of in a moral sex panic right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all... All that is going to happen with this is like eventually it's just going to be used by the police to put black people in jail. Like that's yeah the only Harvey Weinstein's not going to get indicted. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll be more of a, well, it'll be like a guy who. What's that calls. thing we're supposed to be? They're going to make cat calling illegal. <laughs> yeah, and guess who's going to fucking f- go to jail? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's suddenly we're going to have to cancel the Puerto Rican Day Parade. <laughs> Because the main event, the catcalling event, is now off limits. <laughs> that was the that was my favorite part of the parade. Yeah. yeah. What well, do we have? What do we have to look forward to in 2018, though? Too like the oh that Don Henley story. Yeah, yeah. If that's real, and you know, I believe it too, because Don Henley's such a fucking insufferable asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he sucks, and the fucking Eagles are like whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, like, I know it's like cool to hate the Eagles, which I like, I think is too far, but like, yeah, you know, Henley has this idea of himself as being this, like such a fucking important musician. He's just some asshole fucking millionaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope he fucking burns in hell. Yeah. Look at his stupid face. (laughs) I'm going to look for that in 2018, early 2018. No, he's like one of those guys that's like, he just, he, he's, he, he feels like everyone he's, he's, his disposition is like. He thinks that everyone thinks he's a real tough guy, but he's not sure about it. So he just has to say it every once in a while. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's like this, like insecure kind of. I just hate him. I really yeah. fucking hate that. Oh, totally. Henry. And I hope that story comes out. And I hope he fucking goes to jail. I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah. that's something I look forward to. Yeah, yeah. that story is fucking nuts because yeah. it, it it involves some important California politician. So some okay. people are saying maybe, right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe maybe Jerry Brown. Oof. Yeah, mm. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> yeah, Could she be. was the girl. Yeah, <laughs> what a twist! Yeah. What a no, twist. the people think that the the girl is Doug Lamalfa's wife. Okay, this woman Jill Lamalfa, because the the age works out. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Read blind items, guys. Okay, They're a lot of fun. Well, you know, if you have if you have bipolar disorder, it'll definitely you know, help really bring out the strongest elements of it. You know, really throw you into a fucking manic spiral. Oh, I've been, yeah. like, crashing this week because I was going nuts with all this stuff last week, and, like, now this entire week I've been sleeping, like, 16 hours a day, and I... Oh, just overloaded. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I'm, like, I'm, like, crashing very hard. I can barely stay awake. Hmm. Well, thanks for coming here and uh, getting it out. We really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah I got to go do Race Wars now. Oh, Yeah. And also, guys, please listen to Come Town. It's uh, it's my favorite show, and so uh, funny. Yeah, I'm a big fan. And thanks, um, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This has been another episode of the Sit Down. Thanks yeah. for joining us. R.I.P. Frank. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so I'm I'm dead right now, and I'm burning in hell. <laughs> <laughs>